So this week I decided I'm gonna do another creative build because it's been a very long time since I've done one of these and I got a little inspiration to do one. So today I'm gonna be building up a farming village. So I started this one off by creating a brand new world and looking for a place to build. And finding a place to build was pretty easy since I already knew that I wanted to build in a sort of plains slash forest biome right next to an extreme hills biome so I could have a nice mountain range as a backdrop. So then once I found this place to build I just cleared out all the trees and then took a screenshot of the area I had to work with and then started planning everything out in GIMP. Wait, pause. Before we get into the rest of this video, if you do end up enjoying it, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below. It's completely free and it helps me out a lot, so if you could do that, I would greatly appreciate it. Anyway, let's get back into this video. So then with everything planned out, I started building. And a little more specifically, I started building up the pathways. And these pathways are not exact to the plan, but they're close enough and I still think they look good anyway. So then after getting the pathways laid out, I started on terraforming. And the terraforming for this place was very tedious, so halfway through terraforming, I decided to just start working on building up the farmland. And for the walls around the farmland, I'm using a very similar design to Flip, and I just really like the design he uses for his walls around his fields. I think it just looks really good, so I am stealing a little bit from him. But for this first field, I decided to just do a standard wheat field. But for the second one here, I decided to do potatoes. And for the potatoes, I really wanted to space them out because in real life, you don't really grow potatoes right next to each other like you would with wheat. So I think it makes a little more sense to have a little more space between each row. So I did put a little bit of coarse dirt between each row of potatoes and I think it turned out really good. So then I just did a little more terraforming and placed in a couple more fields. And so for these two fields, I just did one with wheat and then one with beetroots. And for this beetroot field, I did pretty much the exact same thing that I did for the potatoes. After getting this place terraformed and the fields put in, I decided to start working on the village area. And for these village houses, the palette that I used was dark oak logs and then bricks and terracotta. So then to make each house unique, I decided to use a different color of terracotta. And I think all in all, these houses turned out really good. I did try to have a unique layout for each one and in general try to make each one look a little bit different from the rest. And then I finished off this section of houses by putting in a well. And I really think this well just tops this whole area off and makes it look so much better. So after building up this section of village houses, I decided to then build up the manor. So I wanted this manor house to be similar to the village houses, but also be a little more unique and a little bit bigger, obviously. So I planned it out to have two different sections to this manor and then have this sort of outdoor walkway area where you could kind of overlook everything. And so to connect both sections of the manor, I decided to have this elevated walkway that kind of went over this outdoor patio area. I also put in two towers here and I really think they make this manor come together and especially the copper roofs, it just ties everything together and makes this manor look really good. So then after building up the manor, I decided to build up this water wheel building 
I'm not exactly sure what to call it, but the general idea is that you use the water wheel here to crush the grains into flour. So for this one, it's a very simple design. I have this water wheel on the side of the building, and I did decide to put a tower in the corner here, and in general, I just think this water wheel building looks really good. So then moving on from building up the water wheel building, I decided to put in one more house in the village area just to make the village feel a little more filled out. And then to fill in this last little area here, I decided to put in another wheat field. But that is pretty much it for this farming village. Really all that's left to do is to add some finishing details. But I'm not going to bore you guys with that, so I'm just going to get right into this b-roll, and then we can do a quick walkthrough of this place after that. So I am here in the farming village to do a little walkthrough with you guys and I am starting out over here by the extreme hills biome in the background and here is one of our wheat fields that is right next to the ocean and I know having a farming village right next to the ocean probably doesn't make much sense but it looks cool so there's that. Anyway on the other side of the pathway here we have our potato field and you can kind of get a better look at the coarse dirt dividing the different rows of potatoes and I think that turned out really good and it just looks amazing. I'm really happy with how that turned out. Anyway for this pathway I went with a combination of cobblestone, gravel, and stone bricks. And the way I textured this is I have these stone bricks at the center because they're a little bit more worn than the cobblestone is and that kind of makes a little more sense to how a pathway would function. The center of it would be a little bit more worn down and so that's why I textured it like this and then I have the gravel as like a little bit of a transition between the stone brick and the cobblestone that's on the edge. Anyway, getting into this village center here, obviously I have the well here and there's a little water down there. And then I have this cauldron, which is supposed to be a bucket for you to collect the water. And then getting into this first house here, it is the greenhouse. And this is like a little stable for a horse. So you would put a horse in there. And I think that turned out pretty good. And no inside here i know i didn't do the interiors but i just completely ran out of time for this one and i did not have enough time to do the interiors anyway moving on to this house here it is the light blue house and i have this little wood storage area on the outside and i think that looks pretty good and i did put a balcony up here on the second floor which I think is really cool. And you can overlook our beet field right here, which again, you can see the coarse dirt dividing the different rows. And then on the inside of this one, again, there is no interior. I just completely ran out of time for this one and was only able to get the exteriors done. And then moving on to this house here, on the outside, 
there is this little greenhouse area and if we come inside here you can get a better look at it it is a little greenhouse area i didn't put any plants in here which i probably should have i probably should have made this one out of green terracotta instead of red um that way it would be the greenhouse yeah, I'm going to move on to this one. Um, <laughs> this one, I did another wood storage area out here. And then I put this sort of crane thing here for lifting up the heavier logs. And it looks pretty good. Um, not exactly sure how it would function, but it looks good. So it has that going for it. Anyway, I did put another balcony up here on this one, just like I did on the light blue house. And again, no interior here. But then going to one of my favorite parts of this village is this little alleyway that goes between these three houses. I think this turned out really good. I really like this alleyway and the atmosphere in here is just amazing. I did put these azalea leaves on the walls here to function as like sort of ivy that's growing on the walls and i think that turned out really good i did try to keep the ivy limited to just the walls that don't have windows so as you can see here i have a little bit of that growing and then over here i have a little bit more of it growing and i think doing the leaves like that really adds to the atmosphere of the village and makes it feel a little more alive like on these areas where there are windows, they're really kind of keeping up the house. But then on areas where there aren't as many windows, they're kind of just letting the ivy grow and take over. Anyway, moving on to this manor here, I do have one of the wheat fields over here. And then there is another wheat field right there. And then going up here, I did put a little bit more ivy there. Well, it's azalea leaves, but it's supposed to be like ivy. And then coming up here, you have one of the entrances inside the manor, which again, there is no interior here. And then there's another one over here. So you can get to that by going underneath this little walkway here. And I really like how that turned out. I think that turned out really good having the two separate buildings and then being connected by that walkway. But then in this patio area, you can kind of overlook the entire village and both wheat fields here. I think this looks really good. And then of course, to finish off this manor, we have the two towers here with the copper roofs. I think these look amazing. I'm very happy with how they turned out, especially the copper roofs. I think the manor from this side just looks amazing and just from all angles, it looks really good, even this side. So I am very happy with how this one turned out. Anyway, going over to this water wheel house, I think it turned out really good. I'm not super happy with the roof on the tower there. I probably should have used a different block. I think the red nether brick just, I don't know. It doesn't blend in super well. It looks all right. I'm not super unhappy with it, but I do kind of want to change it. Anyway, this water wheel here, I think looks really good. I think it's the perfect size. If it would have been any smaller, it would have been way too small. And if it would have been any bigger, I think it would have been way too big. So I am very happy with how this water wheel turned out. Anyway, moving on to the rest of the water wheel house, I did decide to use iron bars for the windows instead of glass. And I think it really just adds to the atmosphere of this place. And it makes it feel a little more run down and not as well kept up, but it still feels like it is kept up enough to be functional. And that's kind of the vibe that I wanted to go with for this one. So I'm very happy with how it turned out overall. I also really like this cliffside around the river here that's kind of keeping the potato field up. And then also the cliffside that is along the edge of the ocean here. I really like how those cliff sides turned out. I think they look really good and they're really not that difficult to do either. So I'm really happy with how they turned out. But anyway, that is it for this farming village build. If you did enjoy this one, then make sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below. And if you guys really enjoyed this build or you have any suggestions for future builds, then make sure to leave those down in the comment section below. But anyway, that is all for this one. So as always, don't forget to keep building.